All right, this one might be a little bit of a doozy. <laughs> I am waking up to God talking to me about the trumpets. And I've kind of heard him calling me in to understand what's going on right now. But I don't know if I was just feeling like I wasn't totally perceiving it or what was happening. I wasn't totally leaning in to what he was saying. But this morning, he's really calling me in on it. So I want to talk with you about it. I believe he's going to reveal this to you. I really want you to take care to discern what I'm saying by the Holy Spirit and ask him to, re to reveal it to you. Ask him to reveal truth to you because you're really going to need for him to show this to you or you're not going to get it. And you should definitely not just be accepting it from me. I've told you in other videos that, and this has been a while that God has been showing me this, that he does these little harvests where he's calling people in, he's giving them an opportunity, he's speaking to them, he might cast out a spirit and give them peace. I've definitely watched him do that with certain people that I've worked with where they do return to him. He casts out that spirit of fear, gives them peace. He's talking to them, he's bearing the fruit, and then he starts to require of them. They enjoyed that little wooing process, but they're like, eh, never mind. This is too hard a teaching. This is too much work. You know, same things that were going on when Jesus was here. That's exactly what they were saying when he was preaching about him being the bread of life, that they need to feast on his flesh and drink of his blood. And they were saying, this is too hard a teaching. Who can understand it? And they just started dropping off. He didn't give up on us, but we give up on him very easily. So here's what he's showing me today. I think it was last week or the week before he had me doing videos on the trumpets, trumpets one through four. And as we were studying the trumpets, one of the things that we discovered is this is not what we think in the natural. It's not what we think is going to happen in the natural. And these trumpets are actually representing his harvest. Now, previously, I had understood that the trumpets were calling us in. And I still believe that, that the trumpets are calling us in. He's sending certain things to the earth and he's calling us in. And so this, the process of that trumpet represents these little harvests that I've been talking with you about, how he calls us in, gives us an opportunity. And then whether we obey or we reject him is going to determine whether we're blessed or punished and spit out of his mouth. And so we talked about that first trumpet, hail and fire mixed with blood. Certainly he has sent hail and fire, but it doesn't, it's not looking exactly like this trumpet, right? And we see that he sends hail and fire mixed with blood and then a third of the earth is burned up and a third of the trees, a third of the grass. So though he's sending something to the earth, many things to the earth, as a matter of fact, I mean, he's sent far more than hail and fire. People are not returning or they return, think parable of the sower. They return, they receive the good news with joy, and then all oh, that seed is pecked away. It's got no root. It falls on shallow ground, on the rocks and the top of the dirt. They don't return, so they're not brought in. And I want you to also pay attention to how he says in each of these trumpets, a third of the earth, a third of the sea, a third of the, you know, blah, 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 is, is killed, uh, turns to blood. When he says many are called, few are chosen, he means few. So you, you got to look at how this is happening. A third, and then a third of what is left, and then a third of what is left, and then a third of what is left. You get that? That's what he's doing in the beginning. And as things progress all the way to the plagues, you see that all of it, all of it turns to blood. He's doing something here. This also, he also reminds me of that vision that he showed me of him, and obviously I didn't see his face, his, you know, it's not like that. I knew in the spirit that it was him with some sort of instrument like a, like a machete or a sickle cutting down, cutting down from left to right and saying, I'm moving on and I'm moving on quickly. The bottom line is you either have a heart for him or you don't. He is either in your heart or he's not. And I want you to know that at this point in history, this harvest is moving quickly. It's moving fast. And it makes total sense because by the time the fifth trumpet blows, no one else is harvested in. No one else repents. You know that this is the end. This is it. I've been telling you that. And people just don't care. I see it right in front of me. People who are close to me 
don't care. They are not bearing the fruit. They are not fixing their families. They are not standing in the authority he's given them. And you know what? God is God is righteous. He knows exactly what he's doing. So if they're one of the ones that turn to blood, what, I mean, it just grieves me. It grieves me so much. I just can't even believe it. It is, it is outrageous to me when people call themselves Christian and will not do basic things like fast and return to him. All right, first trumpet, when we talked in the video it, it, on the first trumpet, uh, I think it was probably within the last week or something like that that I posted that we talked about the hail and fire mixed with blood was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up and all the grease, green grass was burned up. We talked about the, fan, the fact that we are land. We are Jer Jerusalem. You, re you remember that when he talks about, you know, a wife who has been adulterous that you're not to accept her back, hasn't, you don't remarry the one you divorced, has not the land been defiled. We're defined as land. That we're described as land. So when you see that a third of the land is burned up, you should understand here that he's not talking about literal land. He's not going to go backwards. He's not going to go backwards in what he established. He's going to go forward in the understanding of the spiritual. A third of the land is burned up. Remember the metaphors as well for burned up. Is not this man a, a burning stick snatched from the fire? Remember also that he's going to destroy the earth with fire. So when he's saying these things, that things turn to blood, that things are burnt up, he is describing a spiritual phenomenon, something that is happening in the spirit. Right now, what is happening in the spirit is that people are either harvested in or they are not. And I'm not talking about being harvested in because the resurrection is going to take place right now. No, I'm talking about harvested in for the next three and a half years after the witnesses die. That's what's happening right now at this point in history. If you don't know what category you're in, you need to fast. You need to return to God with your entire heart, face to the ground, all of your heart and soul, in weeping, wailing, sackcloth and ashes, fasting, mourning, grieving, lament, that's how you need to return to him because this is the last hour. This is it, you guys. I want to ask you something. When you saw what happened when COVID hit, okay, this isn't about COVID. This is about what God is doing. When you saw that, did you see that there was a great percentage of people who seemed to have spiritually died? And the spirit inside of them was revealed. Did you see a stark contrast? Did you see evil increasing? Did it become clear to you? Okay, that's what's going on. When he sends these things, he is testing the hearts and minds of his people. And you are going to see very clearly who is alive and who is dead. Who are the wheat and who are the weeds? That is, is an issue of discernment. Don't let anyone tell you that that is judgment. You are responsible for discerning. You need to discern and you need to test the spirit. That is what's happening in these trumpets. When I talk with you about those little harvests, people are being gathered in, people are being spit out. He already warned you in Revelation 2 and 3, didn't he? He said, you are neither hot nor cold. What do you think he's going to do? You need to decide whether you're hot or cold. So how's he going to do that? How's he going to determine whether you're hot or cold? He's going to test you. And he already said quite clearly, if you don't decide which one you're going to be, I will spit you out of my mouth. You are being given an opportunity to choose what it's going to be. So understand what this trumpet is saying, that a third are being spit out. This is an opportunity to come in, and concurrently, it is also an opportunity to be spit out. The second angel sounded his trumpet and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. We talked about that in that video. If you want to know more, because I'm going through this, I'm going to go through it quickly. You want to know more? Do a search on the channel on the second trumpet or the first trumpet or the third trumpet, okay? We already talked about what it means to be in the fire. If it's all ablaze... If there's fire, it's either the consuming fire of God coming out of his mouth or it's the fire of destruction. So you need to be discerning what he's talking about at a given moment. This is a fire of destruction. This is a huge mountain all ablaze, a great power all ablaze that is thrown into the sea, into the peoples, multitudes, languages, and nations. And a third of the sea turns into blood when this happens. 
and a third of the living creatures in the sea die, and a third of the ships are destroyed. Let me tell you something. That huge mountain, that huge power of counterfeit Christianity that's all ablaze, that burning stick in the fire, going to go to its destruction, but it has been thrown to the sea. Listen to the things they're preaching. Look at the way that they're leading people astray. Christian nationalism, of all things, campaigning for the Antichrist, thrown into the sea, and what's happening in the sea. Those who accept this, those who follow it, they're dying. They are spiritually dying. They are turning to blood. What is blood? Well, remember that God says to Ezekiel, if I warn you of destruction, if I warn you that something's coming and you don't say anything, their blood is going to be on your head. They will die. And their blood is going to be on your head. What's he talking about? Spiritual blood. Their spiritual life. Their eternal life. But if he does warn and they choose to do wrong, they choose not to listen, their blood will be on their own head and they will still die. What's happening here? When a third of the sea turns into blood. When a third of the people's multitudes, languages, and nations turn to blood. They're following these false doctrines. They're following counterfeit Christianity. They've made their choice known. So at the first trumpet, you have a third of the land, a third of the green grass, and a third of the trees burnt up. What's left of that, a third of that is being burnt up. As the next trumpet comes in, a third of that is going to become blood. Do you see what's happening here? Is this a harvest? Do you understand how serious this is? This is him saying, you're done. You understand. You don't have until the end of time to get it together. You have these trumpets. That's it. You have by the time the witnesses die. That is it. I can't tell you any more clearly. That is it. Do you see it happening? Do you perceive what's happening in this land, in these waters, in Jerusalem, in God's house, in the multitudes, peoples, languages, and nations? Do you see what is happening? People are making their choice. Do you know why the Antichrist is going to rise? Because people are making their choice. Do you understand why counterfeit Christianity is going to persecute God's people and the power of his holy people will be broken? Do you understand that that is going to happen in a few years and that right now is the time when God's people are being harvested in? Do you understand that when a third is taken and then a third of that of what remains is taken and then a third of what remains is taken. Do you understand what he's doing? All of them have been called, but only a few will remain. Only a few will remain. This third trumpet is what he's woken me up with this morning. This is where I believe we're at with the trumpets. Your job here is to discern what I say by the Holy Spirit, to make sure that you are receiving this from him, not me, because if you receive it from me, which category do you think you're going to be in? You need to receive this from God. You need to return to him and ask him if what I'm saying is true. You cannot receive this from me. I am not one of these false prophets on YouTube channels telling you to listen to me, trying to make you forget God's name. You need to return to him and ask him if this is what's going on right now. If what I'm saying is true. The third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. In the video on the third trumpet, I talked with you about the bitter waters, the bitter water representing a curse. If a wife had cheated on her husband, if there had been infidelity in the marriage, and if there had, when she drank those waters, a curse would come on her. Her abdomen would swell. Her thighs would waste away. If she would, was pregnant, she would miscarry. She brought a curse on herself for infidelity. As you read Revelation 2 and 3, do you hear that theme? You're neither hot nor cold. You're committing adultery with the enemy of God, and you're about to be spit out of his mouth. This is the curse of bitter water. And many people died from the waters that had become bitter. There is spiritual death happening right now, right before our eyes. And we're all going, what are we, what's going on? What's happening? Something's happening. We all know something's happening. This is what's happening. Spiritual death is happening right before our eyes. Let me say it again. Spiritual death is happening 
right before our eyes. Those lampstands that God talks about in Revelation 2 and 3, when those lampstands are taken, what does that represent? Spiritual death is happening before our very eyes. God is harvesting those who have a heart for him. You need to lean in even more. Even if you think you're in him, you make sure that you have that guarantee. You hold on. And the, I know this is going to sound weird, but the picture that he just put in my mind is one who's holding on to like a tree or a light post or something while the wind is trying to blow him away. That's what's going on right now, guys. You need to hold on. He's that tree. He's that lamppost. You need to hold on with all your life because the wind, the torrent is trying to sweep you away. And this is the last hour. That fourth trumpet, I keep... You know, I keep trying to understand, is there something more that he wants me to understand? I still am not 100% as to whether this one is face valid. He may reveal more to me about it, but right now, he is really pressing these first three trumpets. And even as I was doing the videos, the first three trumpets were very clear to me. The fourth was not entirely clear. Please, please heed this warning. There's no time for you to be lukewarm. There's no time for you to be saying, oh, I'll do it next week, next month. No, you need to do it now. You need to return to him now. There's no next week. There's no next month. You, he is moving quickly. The fact that he gave me that vision a couple of years ago and now is bringing that back to me and showing me how quickly he's moving really blows me away. This is happening before our very eyes. And this definition that we have used for Christian up until now needs to be tightened up. We need to understand what it actually means to be Christian, what it actually means to choose God in our hearts. We need to understand that that fruit needs to be coming out of us through our forehead, our mouth, our right hand, our thoughts, what we, how we're speaking, and our deeds. There's no more time. There's no more time. You got one trumpet left. Do you understand how serious that is? That anyone who thinks, oh, I've got one trumpet, I'll, I'll, I'll wait this out a little while. Mm -mm. That's not a heart that's going to be saved. This is happening before our very eyes. Please make the decision to return to him. And when you hear his voice, and when you feel his presence, and he's moving you, don't turn away. Thank you for listening. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.